holding right here is the uh, International Convention uh, for the Protection uh, of All Persons from Enforced Disappearances, uh, which was uh, signed in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And up to date, there is m over 94 countries are members to it, and there is more. And also referring to the uh, General Assembly Resolution uh, 47-133 of 1992. Uh, if I may quote uh, a couple of articles, uh, and then I will come with my question. Maybe just one excerpt, rather than a couple. Uh, no one shall be subjected to enforced disappearances. Part two, no exceptional circumstances whatsoever, whether a state of war or a threat of war, internal political instability, or any other public emergency may be invoked as a justification for enforced disappearances. In Egypt, as a country going through transformation after the Arab Spring, an Egyptian NGO issued a report back in May, and uh, they have counted over 216 uh, cases of enforced disappearances, which remains 146 unresolved. Uh, s several of these cases involved uh, arresting people with no warrants and taking them into police stations. However, the government records show no uh, indication of such incidents. NGOs in general in Egypt these days are faced with a harsh measures of control, obstruction of performance work, safety of the NGO workers are always at risk of being apprehended, of being uh, harassed, in addition to the usual harassment for the uh, independent media. My question is, what's the working group position on these new cases in Egypt, which was not the case for many decades, and now it's surfacing very strongly under the current regime, and uh, what's the jurisdiction of the International Convention of the Protection uh, of All Persons from Enforced Disappearances and previous General Assembly resolutions in this regard can provide for those abductees and their families and loved ones? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fahir, for your... Fahir, for your... Fatir, for your uh, question. Um, with regards to new cases, um, as I mentioned to your colleague, unfortunately, I cannot comment on uh, specific cases uh, because of their, their, their confidential nature, but uh, as, as you can see from our annual report, uh, we receive a great number of cases from Egypt, and uh, it's a very... Um, uh, contemporary uh, problem. It's we're receiving current current uh, current claims uh, with 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 frequency, uh, as it appears uh, in our our uh, annual report. Um, with regards to the jurisdiction of our working group, we do not um, uh, limit ourselves to. Um, countries that have uh, ratified the convention you just referred to. I'm, I'm, I'd, I'd have to verify if Egypt uh, has ratified the convention. I don't think so. Um, but our working group's competence does not depend on the convention. It is a broader um, competence, which uh, is based on General Assembly resolutions, including the 1992 declaration uh, which we both referred to earlier, but these, the, the obligations contained in these instruments constitute norms of customary international law and are binding on all states, uh, disregard, uh, regardless of the ratification of, of certain treaties. Actually, um, uh, if you look at uh, if you look at the Rome Statute uh, regarding ICC, you will see that enforced disappearances is, 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 is included. Uh, if you look at the um, ICRC study with regards to uh, rules of uh, humanitarian law which constitute customer international law, you'll see that enforced disappearances as well are clearly um, prohibited under customer international law. So our working group does act upon this legal basis and is competent to receive claims 
with regards to, to all countries and to um, engage in other procedures. Um, as I just uh, mentioned to you, we, uh, we do receive uh, uh, claims with regards to Egypt. Uh, however, with regards to cases, I should recall, as I just mentioned when I was uh, discussing this uh, with Matthew earlier, that our, our mandate with regards to cases is, is more of a humanitarian mandate to the extent that our objective is to locate a person or find out uh, his, his fate. Uh, it is not to attribute state responsibility um, uh, as other uh, mechanisms within the UN will do, including the Committee uh, on Enforced or Involuntary Disappearances, which is um, competent to uh, look at cases regarding alleged violations of the Convention. Of course, this requires that the state has one, ratified the Convention, which is not the case for Egypt, and has also recognized the com committee's competence to receive cases. The committee, once those two conditions are fulfilled, can attribute state responsibility on allegations of violations of, of the treaty. Our competence is not to do so, it's more to locate a person. Now, w we do have other mechanisms uh, that uh, we are able to use uh, with regards to, uh, to those uh, situations in addition to cases. We have um, the general allegation procedure which allows the working group to receive information from civil society actors with regards to a, a broader general situation uh, of human rights violations and more specifically of enforced disappearances. And in those cases, we will contact state authorities and inform them of our concern for receiving credible information on, on certain elements related to enforced disappearances and then ask a series of questions to, uh, to the state in order to engage in this dialogue. So there's this general, um, general allegation which we can use as a procedure for all states, not as I mentioned uh, to only those uh, re 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 who have ratified the convention. And then, of course, there are other uh, broader mechanisms, like I was m uh, mentioning earlier, the country visit uh, mechanism, uh, which allows us to uh, go uh, at the invitation of a state in the country and speak with uh, uh, state officials directly and with civil society actors and then follow up on the recommendations that we've made in this regard.